We have some catch up to do in this edition of Blooms For You. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. However, what I'm going to do is pair up the magnificent blooming that happened with my berry odor together with some footage of what I woke up to on the patio today. It rained last night. There was a persistent drizzle up until now, so I thought I'd better get out there, take some footage, because this doesn't happen in southern Spain this time of year. But I don't want to take away what this video is all about, what this series is all about. It is my way of giving back to you to say thank you so much for your support on my channel by identifying everybody that comes new to the channel, be it in the comments or in the subscriber list that I can see, and putting them on a list and then systematically go down the list and allocate buds and blooms to names and then do shout outs and say thank you for your support of my channel this way. I knew very early days I was not going to be able to do giveaways. Giveaways are a great way to also thank everybody for their support. However, that isn't realistic for my channel. So instead of having one person win something on occasional giveaways, eventually, everybody that I can identify will get a bloom and a thank you. And sometimes there are repeat thank yous because I get orchids gifted to me and the first blooming of said orchids in my care then get dedicated to the person that gifted me the orchid and one of those candidates we have today. Meanwhile, I mentioned we're playing catch up. I have some blooms that have long faded, but the footage lasts forever. So I will be putting dates up when they feature as to when the footage was taken, when the orchid was in bloom, so as not to confuse. If you don't see any dates, that means the orchid is currently in bloom. There's a group of supporters to the channel that I shout out every single Blooms For You video. These are the Orchid Ninjas. According to YouTube members, but here on Ninja Orchids, they are Orchid Ninjas, and they support the channel with a monthly subscription, get a few perks, one of them is getting their own designated orchid and when it blooms, well, that orchid always, always blooms for the orchid ninjas. However, Lady Chatterley is currently not in bloom. Maybe she will bloom for us this season, maybe she won't. But I have something super special, in my opinion, for the orchid ninjas today. This is my Cat Leantha White Bridal Snow White. Orchid ninjas? my first blooming of my first ever wishlist orchid. When I started building this collection, she blooms for you. I am sure you know the history of this orchid. I've done several videos on her, her trials and tribulations getting established in my collection. But to see these blooms on the patio in the blooming alley, it is a massive milestone. It's as if the first shall come last. <laughs> it took quite a while to source this orchid and only recently, while every other orchid has been in my collection for a considerable amount of time, this orchid only just arrived, I would say, in 2021, which is pretty recent for an orchid collection. Anyway, first blooming, anything that blooms white on the patio is such a joy and a double joy being my white bridal Snow White. So Orchid Ninjas, I appreciate your support so very, very much. This Catliantha White Bridal, her first blooming ever, she blooms for you. Currently, I cannot detect a fragrance. Needless to say, the blooms have only just opened. Needless to say, it's a first time bloomer. Maybe she won't have a fragrance this time around. And of course, it's an overcast day. So this orchid may need a little bit more warmth and a little bit more time before she comes onto her own. If you want to become an orchid ninja, oh my goodness, consider yourself welcome. You got to subscribe to the channel. This will reveal a join button. Hit the join button and click OK. Okay. And then you will also get yourself some icons next to your names that start with blooms. And the longer that you are an Orchid Ninja, eventually the official Orchid Ninja emoji will appear next to your name as well. So I encourage you to become an Orchid Ninja if you would like to be involved with the shenanigans going on in the background. And then also get your shout outs at every Blooms For You video. Parallel to my little patio tour where everything looks wet and wonderful. <laughs> I also want to add that anybody that is not mentioned in this video today 
We have the berry odor, her beautiful blooming. I am going to leech off of that blooming once again to say that anybody not mentioned in this video today, the berry odor, she bloomed for you. Thank you as well for your support on the channel, for being here, clicking on the video. And now let's go and have a look, see which orchids had bloomed out, which names have come up and which orchids are still currently in bloom. I'm playing catch up with this orchid dedication. This is Rincolalia Golf Green Hair Pig. Very special orchid in my collection and the two blooms that this orchid bloomed. The list showed me the name of Samcat56 and Nari Pitman. So here we are, better late than never. My golf green hair pig, unbeknownst to you up until now, she bloomed for you. During a time of year where things were not ideal, I nipped the blooms off very, very quickly after she bloomed because I don't want to stress this orchid out. I would prefer the orchid alive so that she can bloom again as opposed to struggling. She is on the east side now, recovering from her winter ordeal. Highlight orchid, <laughs> what can I say? Doesn't get that during my winter months, so when she bloomed, I was grateful, but I was very, very happy to be able to document get the footage, knowing that one day I can put a dedication together for you, Samcat56 and Nari Peatman, but my orchid needed the rest. The bloom duration could have easily been three weeks, and her fragrance was also a little bit on the weak side. Certain things weren't lining up. The blooms were perfect, but there is no way that I was going to let her get stressed out, and the orchid is doing really well at the moment, and that is one of the most important things and we managed to get a dedication as well as an orchid that's still alive i think that works out perfectly so my rincolalia golf green hair pig very dear to my heart is was depending on how you want to see it dedicated to you samcat 56 and nari peatman as a massive thank you for your support on my channel i really really appreciate you Oh, I love me a floriferous orchid, <laughs> an orchid that gives me lots of blooms because I can make a good dent into my list, which of course I refer to on the regular so that I can put names next to buds. My beautiful Guatemalenses here. Oh, this orchid. Anyway, first of all, thank you to the following for your support on my channel. Aravind D, Antonio Sebastian, Baiju P. Jose, Tessie Joseph. Kuwait, Laijo P. Jose Sharja, Alan Gio, Donna Gio, Liziama Thomas, and Anthony Tanka Bascar. This is Guarianthe guatemalensis, a natural hybrid, a beautiful, a big orchid. <laughs> but oh yes, these blooms. When I saw the buds coming, I saw the list and I said, oh, oh, a match made in heaven. Thank you to all of you so, so much for your support on my channel. Know that I really appreciate having you here and seeing your names come up matching you to this orchid. My Guatemalensis has to go through a rough winter. <laughs> She's a highlight orchid, but while she is on the floor in my winter orchid holding space, she starts to push buds and then it's game on trying to make sure that she doesn't get bud blast depending on the conditions around February, March. She has by now finished her blooming. I am playing catch up, but she is around for a good four weeks in my blooming alley when the temperatures are then acceptable for her to go outside and what a pleasure she is. She has a gorgeous rose fragrance. What I love about this orchid is the color of the blooms. They are more coral, more tropical. I love the fact that they're not just the pink or the obvious definite purple, you know? There's a little bit of a magical difference about the colors of these blooms. And then when the sun hits them the right way, they sparkle, but she doesn't need sun to smell nice. So all these blooms in my blooming alley give me a gorgeous rose fragrance. If you think of a bunch of roses, multi-floral roses usually have a beautiful, intense fragrance. And that is the fragrance of the Guatemalensis. 
She's a special orchid because, yeah, as space is an issue during the winter, I still have her. And she is one of the orchids in one of the very large pots that still has to come inside. But I don't move her in and out during the winter. No, I don't do that to myself. But yeah, I'm so pleased that she is at least accepting the conditions for what they are. And she does this for us every single year. Wait, I say for us. No, wait, wait, wait. This year in 2023, my Guatemalenses, once again, as a massive thank you for your support on my channel, she blooms for Aravind D, Antonio Sebastian, Baiju P. Jose, Tessie Joseph, Kuwait, Laiju P. Jose Sharja, Alan Gio, Donna Gio, Liziama Thomas, and Anthony Danka Bascar. I hope that in your part of the world, everything is going according to your liking. And from a distance, the least I can do is give you these blooms and say thank you from the bottom of my heart for your support here. What we have here is my Epicatlia rainy marquez crossed with Dimarandra imarginata. I know it's a mouthful, <laughs> especially Dimarandra imarginata, because that always reminds me of some kind of a pasta dish, something along those lines. Anywho, what is not a mouthful is who these blooms are dedicated to, and that is Rayanne Reese. My Dimarandra imarginata, that's how I like to call her. But of course, Epicatlia rene marquez crossed with Dimarandra imarginata, you get my point. Dimarandra imarginata, Rayanne Reese, she blooms for you. Thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. Yes, I'm a little bit disappointed that we only get two blooms to dedicate to you today. Rayanne, I am sorry. When I took the orchid out earlier on, she had two spikes. There should have been more of a display, but I needed to clean the leaves. So there she got some bud blast and what we are left with is two. Meanwhile, two blooms on this orchid, even on a single spike, that is not entirely only what she's capable of. You see, the lack of light, yes, that will reduce the bloom count. I've had this orchid in the past bloom five blooms for me per spike. Oh, well, it is what it is. At least we got two Rayanne Reese and they are beautiful. They've got this pink blush happening all around the petals and sepals. You can see a lot of the Epicatlia Rene Marquez in there. Dimarandra Marginata has more of a pink blush, so that builds into that. And these blooms are super long lasting. While not fragrant at all, they will last about five to six weeks if I let the orchid bloom for the duration of her blooming which I will not allow to happen because this orchid needs to get her grow on. I only have so much time during the warmer months of the year to get an orchid to strength. So the theme of my current collection is once she's bloomed, once I get the dedication done, the spike comes off so that the orchid can grow, get some new roots because the next winter is coming. Like I said, we only have so much time. In the meantime though, I am glad to have her and now we can allow her to get her grow on. Rayanne Reese, your support on my channel is so appreciated. Thank you so, so much. I hope that you're having a beautiful day. Lady Ha Gaming, it has been a while. I hope you're doing well. Here is my Paphiopedalum, no ID, but with a very beautiful bloom that I'm not going to let go to waste. And your name came up and here I am to say thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. This bloom is dedicated to you because of your support. I so appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. And of course, I hope you like this bloom. Now, normally I should be getting three blooms out of this orchid, but things have happened in the past years. Well, here we are with one bloom, better than no blooms. Since this orchid bloomed, she's already been taken out of the pot and she's had a revamp, a cut, a splice. She's been put back together as two pieces into a pot, hopefully with a little bit more space and a little bit more light. We shall see how she develops. Three blooms would be nice next year, but Lady Ha Gaming, this is an exclusive bloom just for you to say thank you so, so much 
for your support on my channel. So far, the orchid is doing well. I don't see anything that is untoward, with the exception of one little detail, with the growth that didn't have enough light and was getting a bit leggy. I will feature that in a separate video because this is not about what is going on with the orchid. This is all about the bloom and about saying thank you to you, Lady Heart Gaming, for your support on my channel. It means a lot to me. I hope you're doing well. Haven't seen you around in a while, but if I do see you, I will make sure that you know your name came up and here we are. This slipper orchid bloomed for you. Personally, I am so grateful that this slipper orchid bloomed. So thank you very, very much for your support of my channel. This orchid is the OG of my Sincorana collection. Yes, I have three in total. <laughs> There's reasons, but I'll tell you those reasons when those orchids bloom, which they haven't, but my OG is in bloom. This is Lelia Sincorana, and oh my goodness, baby, I'm not sure if you're into Sincoranas, if you know about Sincoranas, but maybe now, <laughs> when you look at this, isn't this just amazing? Because, baby, my Lelia Sincorana, first bloom ever on the patio, she blooms for you to say thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. Channel. The size of the bloom in comparison to the size of the orchid is astounding. I have Guatemalensis, a huge orchid, <laughs> and she's a monster. And she blooms blooms that are a tad smaller width and lengthwise than the Sincorana bloom is. And look at the size of the orchid. It's just insane. Absolutely love this. So for a first time bloomer, I don't think we did too badly with this one. She hasn't got a fragrance. I couldn't tell you actually if Sincoranas are supposed to have fragrances, but you know what? I'm just so happy that this one bloomed and she's already chucking out another growth. I doubt very much. Well, I would be pushing my luck thinking that that one's going to bloom as well. But in the meantime, she is so much fun to have on the patio because you know me and my little orchids, my miniatures. I love them so much. <laughs> um, understatement. It's an obsession. Anyway, baby, your support on my channel your comments always encouraging always motivating always so kind and understanding i so appreciate you thank you for everything over the past years i hope that you like the lelia sincorana first time bloom because yeah your name came up <laughs> there's got to be a reason for that <laughs> thank you baby so so much lelia sincorana she blooms for you Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. Love-hate relationship with this orchid. I don't know if you have some orchids in your collection that are like that. I love me my Dendrobium Roy Tokonaga. There is no doubt about it. Otherwise, I would have gotten rid of her a couple of years ago. What I find such a shame with this orchid is that the blooms hang down. It is so hard to get in and underneath them without doing some kind of ninja contortion, but I hope that the images speak for themselves. Anyway, I babble. My Roy Tokonaga, the blooming of 2023, these blooms are dedicated to Lucky Teachers, Clint Parsons, Rasa Lewis, and Sandy Vandergon. Thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. If I didn't love this orchid, I wouldn't dedicate the blooms, so my opening with Love Hate was probably a little bit harsh. <laughs> but yeah, another thing I wish was different about this orchid, I wish she wouldn't be so prone to thrips. It is a nightmare with this orchid, but okay, I've got garlic alcohol, I try to keep them under control. Still, I miss the mark. And then we've got curled leaves, which is an absolute shame. Let's go back to the positive side of this orchid. I just wanted you to be warned in case somebody sees her and says, yes, I want one. Know that thrips is a real, real issue with this orchid and you have to be on top of the maintenance and the prevention. But the positive side of this orchid, oh, never mind, the blooms. That's what we're here for because they do bloom for lucky teachers, Clint Parsons, Russell Lewis and Sandy Vandegan. They are beautiful, they look like little birdies in flight. 
they do make a nice contrast to the foliage when you look at them from the top. It's almost like you're growing a hellebore when you're growing a Roy Tokonaga. <laughs> you have to lift the bloom up in order to appreciate its beauty and then it's a marvel. It absolutely is. She is not fragrant by no means but still the bloom duration is insane. And as per usual with my collection in the recent years I cut bloom durations short so that the orchid can rest, gather strength because the next winter is coming. The bloom duration on Roy Tokonaga is easily two months, three. In some cases, I've had her in bloom for three months back in the day when I could let her exhaust herself because there was no issues in the winter grow space. But now, I do not let the blooms go beyond one month and then just let her do her thing because obviously being prone to thrips there's a lot of energy being sucked out of her seeing as they do quite a bit of damage. I haven't seen thrips on her for a while but usually by that time it's already too late and the damage is done so I'm not trying to weaken my orchid I want her to bloom for some more supporters of the channel in the coming year but this year thank you for your support on my channel so so much lucky teachers clint parsons russell lewis and sandy van der Gun. my dendrobium roy tokonaga she blooms for you i hope you're all doing well in your part of the world i thought as much <laughs> into orchids and add check this out as is tradition on my channel that if I have a gifted orchid, the first ever blooming in my care will go to the person that has gifted me the orchid. That would be you, Inse Orchids and ADD. My Epidendrum radicans red. She blooms for you to say not only thank you for this beautiful orchid, but also thank you for your support on my channel. And as much as I was hoping to get the rich deep red color into frame, yeah, no matter where I go on the patio, we get this. I hope I have some images that will do the bloom color justice. If this orchid were to ever grow to size, from what I gather, they can get quite big. My little one is not exactly big red just yet, but should she grow to size, then I shall change the name from red to big red. My little one here, she has a ways to go. Let's just put it that way considering what I see out on the interwebs. However, I am super happy that she's doing well in my setup of LECA and self-watering. Normally, if there's a terrestrial orchid and in certain climates and environments, this orchid can be grown in the ground with good, good drainage around her, then LECA and self-watering shouldn't be a problem. But it remains to be seen if I can grow her to size in this setup. Meanwhile, if she stays nice, small and compact, that's a bonus for me as winter space is an issue and she cannot stay outside in my cold winters. And well, if she does grow to size, we will have to find a way to make sure that she stays at least a tad warmer while during the winter and we don't lose her. I have not got a single orchid in my collection that blooms red. So this one, she has a special place in my heart once again for many reasons. But the main reason being she came from you. Thank you once again. And the fact that you're supporting my channel. It's a reminder all the time. Thank you so, so much. I hope you're doing well, Inse, and I hope that your orchids are doing well as well. Know that I appreciate you. Dania Tortelli, please, please look past the spotted leaves in the background and focus in on the beautiful blooms of my Phalaenopsis Leodoro Sweet Memory because these two blooms I dedicate to you to thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. I so appreciate our communications, the comments, the live streams that you can take part in. It's just wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for being here. My beautiful Leodora Sweet Memory blooms, not the plant, the blooms are gorgeously fragrant and that is what's giving me a bit of a sad because this orchid is not dealing well with my winter conditions and the leaves have suffered cold damage. I thought we were gonna come through 
just just in time when the temperatures warmed up but i was mistaken and well here we are cold damage on leodora sweet memory leaves still this is the newest spike that she has that she grew throughout the winter so you can see that yeah even though i've got low light levels we still got some blooms I was hoping to at least get a couple more but you know the end of the spikes they are still you know they've not dried up there's another one back here also has some potential but i have a feeling i'm going to be cutting the spikes off so that this orchid can just rest but i'm not going to cut it off that fast because these blooms are just majestic that fragrance of sweet candy candy floss with a hint of citrus in it it is fresh beautiful elegant divine all the adjectives that you can imagine in a bloom and it's fragrant not only the colors the markings and i'm really appreciating the markings this year because they are so much more pronounced and so much more distinct dania tortile your support is uplifting and it is very very much appreciated my leodoro sweet memory she blooms for you with these two blooms you just can't look past them no i mean for real stunning thank you dania tortile i so appreciate having you here on the channel you wonderful human being i am blessed that you are here thank you so so much I won't say it's kind of cold outside, it was this morning a little bit nippy, but now I have humidity of 86%. That is insane for the month of June. But it is wonderful, absolutely wonderful for the orchids that struggle with the lack of my humidity. So they are out <laughs> hoping to get a little bit more rain. No, I'm not concerned about crown rot, but my concern did extend to the Phalaenopsis orchids. They are not outside because, yeah, I don't want the night temperatures to affect them in any way, shape or form. Seeing as most of my summer bloomers are struggling, I don't want to add to that effect. We have one more day of this rain to go. Maybe if it really, really pours, then I shall be out again with another video because the rain in Spain not falling mainly on the plain. Hmm. For us, that is a very special occasion here down on the coast where it's normally flip-flop weather. <laughs> Not for me yet though. So that's the downside. It is usually blistering warm and super duper windy as well. The first season without my mega vandas <laughs> and I've got the perfect conditions. I just cannot. Anyway, such is the way with this wonderful hobby. You take what you get and you make the most of it. So I really hope that you enjoyed seeing some blooms from yestermonth <laughs> and presently. I thank you for watching. I thank you for your support. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though, as per usual, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.